uh, from about the age of, a, of five, uh, I decided I wanted to be an artist. And uh, I had a mentor in my grandmother who was a painter, so I started painting. But at about 36, I switched to uh, sculpture. And what I realized that was central to my work was storytelling. Uh, this piece, A Dozen Lies in a Single Word, kind of tells a bit about the hallmark of being a storyteller. Um, over the arc of my career, certain ideas keep percolating as themes and metaphors. Nature, relationships, the human condition, and home. The refiner's fire here is an affirmation about the resurgence of life into an area devastated by fire. For many of my pieces, the titles are half the story. Also important <coughs> is the drama created from the cast shadows. The death of the poet is kept from her poems, takes its title from Auden's eulogy of Yeats. In making a piece, I try and have my hand in every aspect um, of the bronze making or woodworking, including nest making. <laughs> and thinking about a piece, I kind of ask myself, well, what kind of materials would best further the story that I'm going to try and tell? Uh, in this case, the myth of fingerprints, I learned marquetry and uh, stone carving so that I could make the, dark, the shadow of the piece appear light and not dark and shadowy. Um, this piece, self-portrait, excuse me, self-portrait, selfish, was kind of just a, a play on words, um, kind of me cracking myself up in my studio. <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking about Bernini and the damn soul and how he put his foot repeatedly into the fire to get that look of anguish on the face. Um, another artist that I really like, Robert Park Harrison, is a photographer who has these very whimsical post-apocalyptic views, which got me sort of thinking about what our view is going to be um, with the result of global uh, climate change. The title of this piece is The Littoral Zone, and it is the tidal region, which is the home of the most tenacious and adaptive life forms on Earth, something that we will probably need to emulate when we get there. <coughs> Movement and naturalism is incorporated in a lot of my looks. In this piece, which are bookends, um, called plangere, which means to wail or to moan in Latin, uh, the piece moves from this sort of active um, anguish to one of more resolve. The Ceremony of Innocence takes its title from another Yeats poem, and I started thinking about scale. This piece is way over six feet tall. Um, the snake and the stilts are carved with wood, and the, uh, the gold leaping on the figure sort of heightens the sense of idolization of youth that our culture has. In Heart Like a House, which takes its title from a smash-up of a pa Pablo Neruda poem and a nice Nin's Ladders to Fire, I was thinking about the futility of trying to quench desire the heart is an organ of fire, and this piece used the process of burnout, which uh, bypasses mold making completely and is just a cast of bronze. Um, scale shifts became really interesting to me. <clears throat> the little piece on the right, a plumb line, is suspended from the ceiling um, and kind of really highlights the sense of the ties that bind and the potential fragility of, um, and vulnerability of family life. The, the, the big one became like this playground and very physical, much like this piece, God Have Mercy on the Man Who Doubts What He's Sure Of, which is sort of a memento mori. When you have life in the crosshairs, you ought to take a, take a shot because you know, he who hesitates is lost. <laughs> it's very um, strange to be in a space with a life-size animal because it, it's very threatening on a certain level. And like this piece, um, Whiskey for My Men and Beer for My Horses, it sort of describes a handshake between man and animal. The face of the horse is tooled like the tattoos, the Maoris from New Zealand, while the horse is um, carved with California poppies, like the vaquero that it's kind of nodding its tradition to. I spent a good deal of my childhood on family ranches, uh, one of which allegedly had the largest pomegranate grove in the world on it. And I did a series of botanic sketches, botanical illustrations. What I was trying to go for was, was an authenticity, and so these pieces have everything from inflorescence all the way through the, to the fruit. Um, and hopefully they're realistically and realistic enough and naturalistic enough to make identifications from them. This is Quercus cologi, which is the California live oak. And it's kind of a nod to my uh, great-grandmother, Susanna Bixby Bryant, who started the Botanic Gardens of California. <coughs> this next piece is a detail of a very large 11-foot long wood relief carving um, that was the last piece I did when I was in California. It's of the Carrizo Plains in the California Valley. And one of the things I've wanted to explore in my work is, for a long time, is functionality. 
And so I moved here to uh, Maine to study furniture making at the Center for Furniture Craftsmanship and to personally challenge sort of the notion of art for art's sake. This bench riff is uh, starting to tell the stories in wood. This is about the San Andreas Fault, which coincidentally runs through the Carrizo Plains. And in that plain has uh, the, one of the largest surface examples of a strike slip fault. Um, basically a romantic at heart. And so with this case, uh, duet cabinet, I was trying to tell a love story in wood. The windows, unlike most display cases, are, are very small, little intimate slits for the other get really close to see inside. And all of the angles are taken away and everything is rounded and trying to be as sensual as possible. With this piece, I was uh, going back to marquetry again um, and trying to figure out how to display like light and shadow and translucency of wood um, instead of minimizing the line between the pieces of wood um, I actually used colored epoxy to highlight it and really maximize that graphic notion. Uh, one of the things I love about living in Maine is the closeness I feel to nature. Uh, this piece, Raindrops on Water, as with the bench riff, explores shadows and also like the big string house, uh, the, tactile, the tactile quality of the surface. Uh, when people sit there, they want to, you know, rub it. <laughs> um, so the last piece here, uh, Rorschach's Table, um, is uh, kind of what do the ink blocks tell me? And I guess what I see is in the future, now that I have a little handle on, on furniture making, to maybe explore further a smash up of skill sets so that I can be telling interesting stories in a compelling visual language that is both provocative as well as functional. Thank you.